Uh, hello yet again. Uh, this will be another addition to uh, cheap improvements to this car. Uh, this is kind of an addendum to the one I did before where I fabricated this uh, cold air intake box for my turbos intake cold air intake box which I described in another video before. On this one um, I'm going to describe how I add a resistor. Whenever you add LEDs to a turn signal on your car, uh, the LED does not use as much power as the normal incandescent bulb does. So consequently you get what is called like a hyper flash condition. And in order to rectify that, for every LED light that you add to a turn signal, you need to add one of these. What this is, is a 50 watt 6 amp resistor. And what that does is it adds the needed resistance for the flasher to operate at a proper, at a proper speed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you before and after. And uh, I'm not going to detail installing it. I'll just show how you add this, you splice this into the two wires coming off the LED. Uh, it's fairly simple. Anyone who has any skill with electronics and dealing with cars should be able to do it. It's not a big deal. All right. Um, first, I'm going to show you what it's like without the uh, resistor in place. This is the result of having an LED in, uh, in place of an incandescent bulb and a turn signal. Uh, this one actually is slower than a lot of them. A lot of them, if you, especially if you're using two LEDs, I still have regular flashers in the back, but this is just one LED. If it had two, it would be flashing even more. But for every one of the LEDs that you have in a turn signal circuit, you need to add the resistor. Now I'll show you, I'll install the, uh, the resistor, I'll show you how I, how I wire it in, and then I'll show you the after effects. Okay, this is the install is done. Um, essentially, this resistor has no polarity, so all you're going to do is put, use you can use these vampire quick splices, and you take one side of the wire from the resistor, and you splice it into the ground, which on LEDs is a white, and for the one for the turn signal. For the for the running light one, you don't have to bother with that. That just it just uses less electricity. You're not you don't have to worry about it. Uh, this is only for the turn signal, and you put one on the white, which is the ground, and splice into the opposite one, which is your power, and that's all there is to it. All you're doing is bridging between the uh, you're adding this resistor between the the two wires that go to your turn signal. And you can, you can uh, like bolt this down to some metal. Apparently it gets hot. But as infrequently as you're going to be using the turn signal, um, I don't really think it's necessary. In this application, it's going to just going to go back in there and sit down there on the metal of the car underneath the light. Um, okay, now I will, now that I've shown you that, I will reinstall it and show you the difference. Also, I almost forgot, um, this is the little spacer that I made that goes over here behind this long screw over here. So when you're installing it, that's the little spacer that I made out of a little uh, piece of round uh, tube stock. And that just goes behind there and spaces it out, keeps the uh, intake level. I just wanted to show that because I neglected to show that in the how-to video about the intake. And there you see the after results of adding the resistor. Pretty huge difference. Um, now it's blinking at a normal rate. And I'm going to pause it again so I can turn the car off. And I'm going to show you what probably is going to be the next video that I'm going to be doing. Okay. Now that that's uh, reinstalled, you can kind of see... The resistor in there behind there it's just going to sit down there on the uh the metal of that apparently that gets hot but i hardly think it's going to get hot enough to do anything just be sitting there and obviously it works uh these resistors were it was like seven dollars shipped for two of them 
And if you're doing any kind of LED turn signal modification, uh, you will need to add these in order to slow down and prevent your turn signal from hyper flashing. Um, I'll include a link in the description below as to where I got them from. It, it came from California, so if you're on the left coast, then uh, it'll probably be, you know, relatively soon. It took about a week for them to ship, but they, they were like $7 shipped for two of them. And like I said, if you're doing this, you'll need one of these for each LED turn signal that you replace with, um, you know, each one that would normally be incandescent that you're replacing with the LED, you'll need a resistor with these. And these came in a two pack. It's a 50 watt, six amp resistor that you put in there. And as I said, I'll include a link in the description below. Um, the next video coming up will probably highlight on this new item that just came today, straight from Japan. This is a washer tank for a Suzuki cappuccino. And I got this shipped all the way from Japan for $62 shipped. And that was taking advantage of a uh, Black Friday sale that the guy who does this ships these parts directly from Japan. Uh, I saved $8 doing that. The next uh, video will probably be installing that. And what that does is it allows me to get rid of the stock washer bottle. I can remove that and free up all this space in the engine compartment. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to be adding another, I'm going to buy another Bob's Auto Sports air oil separator and mount it here where my, my old air fuel, uh, rising rate fuel, uh, I'm sorry, rising rate fuel regulator used to go. I'm going to mount my Bob's air oil separator right here and run a line from the PCV valve to the bottom of the it's air separate air oil separator and then up to here. I've I have another if you look on my page here I have a another video where I did a review where I added it to my wife's Subaru and my uh 2013 Tacoma and they work fantastic. And it's even more important that you have that in a turbocharged application because you never want to have anything that's going to reduce the octane of your fuel. Um but anyway, yeah, uh, you can get these Suzuki cappuccino tanks from Flying Miata sells them but you know I hate to say this because Flying Miata are great people they really are um, but this tank is really they sell it for hundred and eighty dollars and that's before they ship it to you it which is to me is just a little bit on the ridiculous side um, when you can go to the link that I'll provide in the description and get this shipped to your house for like 68 or 70 bucks straight from Japan it's the same exact tank. I'll give you the part number. It's a Suzuki factory part number. I'll give you that part number in the description and in the link. And you can just go right to that link. The guy takes PayPal even. So it makes it even easier. So, I, like I said, I hate, the, I hate the show all these cheap alternatives to stuff that Flying Fly Miata offers. But you know that's a huge price difference. When I you can get a ship to your house for seventy bucks, and they offer it for a hundred and eighty dollars before they even ship it to you, um, you know I just can't. You know I I want people to save money so that they have money to spend on other things other than just a simple washer bottle that kind of deal. But it it looks like it's going to work perfectly, and that'll probably be the next video that I that I have in here. Um, until next time, uh, enjoy, subscribe if you want, give it a like, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.